Hi, welcome to Seclair. I'm Dr. Zaida Chaudhry, and I have with me James. Uh, behavioral health therapist at Seclair. Okay, and today's topic is uh, our toxic world. Uh, why we wanted to introduce this topic is because it is so important for all of us to know what is going on um, in the environment, which is very toxic to the environment and to all of us. Because toxins are component causes of most of the diseases and hence detoxification is usually very beneficial. So what are toxin? So toxico is a root of a word meaning poison or toxin. So metals, therapeutic drugs, industrial chemicals, pesticide, fuels, herbicides and abuse drugs which are like exogenous. Then we have bacterial toxins, we have parasitic products bile in fact inside our body can be toxic to us, hormones which are our, these all are our endogenous toxins and substances that accumulate in the body producing toxicity and this we are toxin causing several disorders and also predisposing factors or component causes of most of the diseases. So you know anything about synthetic chemicals? I've learned that reading these labels requires an advanced degree in chemistry, Dr. Chaudhry. Great. And many times I'm simply baffled. However, I've come to learn that if I can't understand it or pronounce it, it's not very good for me. Great. Good. So we have actually hundreds of thousands of synthetic chemicals in the market and today and very uh, few have been thoroughly tested for the harmful effects. In 2002, there was a study that 80% of the U.S. streams contain up to 82% wastewater contaminants, which includes antibiotics, perfumes, detergents, drugs, steroids, and disinfectants. So what is the implication for the product testing? Actually, industries um, has pressured government to take an innocent and proven guilty approach. Innocent until proven guilty. But environmental educates like us have pressured government to follow the precautionary principle meaning that it is toxic until it is proven non-toxic. Many, uh, many corporations continue to push for further deregulation of their safety standards and their product purity. Right. Right. And I think that's the reason it is so important actually for all of us and to educate ourselves regarding all these things and to pick up the things which are uh, better for us and our health. So there are many types of toxicants. We have toxins which can cause us cancer directly and we have mutagens which can cause actually mutation to your DNA so the coding system is disturbed which is your gene and teratogens when you are they are causing the birth defects when you are taking these uh, sub, these things these chemicals uh, they can cause uh, birth defects and then you have neurotoxins they damage your nervous system and endocrine disruptors which are very common actually into day to day things which we are taking normally we do not know how many things which you use are endocrine uh, disruptor and they interfere with uh, hormones and there is one of the drug, I have a small uh, slide on this in which um, thalidomide, it uses to relieve um, nausea during pregnancy um, and it turned out to be very strong um, teratogen and caused thousands of the birth defects. Actually it was born, bef it was banned in 1960. So then what is toxicity? Toxicity can be acute, it can be chronic, acute is sudden, like sudden onset of uh, large exposure to anything, but it can be reversible. For example, organophosphate poisoning farmers who are working in the fields, they can have those kind of toxicities. They can be very acute, but they can be reversible, giving anti antidotes. Then you have chronic toxic toxicity is the same way as slow poisoning. Uh, persisting, progressive over a long period of time, and uh, mostly it is irreversible. And then you have a local toxicity seen in restricted areas of your body, mm -hmm. which is uh, local. And systemic affecting the entire bloodstream or entire part of your bodies. And 
synergistic means that you know the working together of the two toxin in producing a greater effect and then toxic overload the toxic overload is a total load which exceeds the body ability to adapt the damages so immune toxicities, asthma, allergies, cancer, and chronic diseases, neurotoxicities with the cognition, memory, um, and sensory motor dysfunction. Then, then again, saying we were talking about endocrine, endocrine disruptor toxicity, reproduction, and it has to do with the libido and your metabolism of your body. So there are a lot of environmental links to health concerns. And these environmental links, if you see um, air, drinking water, um, we are not even sure that the water which we are drinking is, is uh, without any toxic chemicals. And that's very sad. And food which we eat, land, soil, buildings, environment, emergencies. Um, yes, I can remember when asbestos was a common form of insulation used in used in building homes and lead used to be a common element in paint until they found out that asbestos caused cancer and that lead children were eating the, right. the chips and uh, it was it led directly to a lot of lot of real issues if you see actually a lot of lead poisoning you see even now because there are homes which are older homes and the children which are who are born on these homes uh, they do get lead toxicity and sometimes it is uh, mistaken with uh, just a regular anemia while they give them um, uh, uh, to treat the anemia but treatment of anemia is different than treatment the lead toxicity because lead also toxicity can give you um, anemia too and that brings me to a, to a question Dr. Chowdhury when physicians generally order blood work or they order specific tests how often do physicians test for toxic levels of certain substances in a body. I just, I don't know. No, it's not a regular test, it's not a routine test. Unless you are um, dealing with sign and symptoms which alarm the physician that they might need to do those tests. For example, in lead toxicity in the children also, it's not a day-to-day -day test. But yes, if the history of uh, the child is that he's living in the environment which is very old homes and he's eating um, all these, uh, like you were saying, that uh, they, blood, they show the paint chips, paint chips and all, then yeah, that's and then the child shows some signs and symptoms. Then yes, well, I know in many homes the before the advent of copper and plastic piping, lead was a common uh, pipe that was used in right. homes to water. Right, right. So when you come to the air pollution, it is like burning smoke from the power plants, waste, motor vehicles, marine vessels, aircraft, volcanic activity, and a lot of things, you know. Fumes from the paint, which we were talking, aerosol sprays, other solvents, uh, and chemicals used in agriculture, forest management, methane from the landfills, uh, and germs from the hospital waste. They all are actually um, uh, participating in this air pollution. Dust from the desert lands, radioactivity due to the nuclear weapons, radon gas. Radon gas actually where we live in the Pittsburgh area. There are a lot of mines in the past and there are a lot of uh, homes. Uh, you never know that they were uh, the mines in the past. Radon gas is uh, pretty much common in uh, I think Pittsburgh area where uh, uh, in the basement especially and the red on gas causes lung cancers so even at my home actually we have tested for the red on gas and we have put the exhaust fan so that it runs all the time uh, just so that you know we get get rid of the red on which I'm not even sure that how much it is versus it's not but to be um, very careful about it uh, we can do those having the exhaust fan to get rid of the red ons from the basements uh, then we are talking about the food, pesticide to the food and sprays and how we can get um, these, uh, they can produce cancer, all these pesticides. And uh, I was reading one somewhere about um, uh, about this, 60% are um, percent of uh, herbicides in the pesticides. 
90% of fungicides and 30% of insecticide are known. All of these are known to cause cancers or carcinogens and or mutagenic, which we talk about how they uh, do the mutation of your gene, which is DNA. Uh, teratogenic also. So neurotoxin causes immunosuppression. And uh, the next week we're talking about the land and the soil and uh, in the land of the soil there are a lot of risks. Uh, but there are a lot of benefits too. So you, when, uh, when we reduce the risk by getting sick without giving up the health benefits that fruit offers, we usually think that you know we have a fruit and we can wash it and, the, and, and we are fine if there is any, any pesticide and whatever it is. But no, how it is that in every fruit, if that is grown into a, an environment which is sprayed, so that gets into the same way as if you're getting IV injection in your body, you, you just cannot clean your skin. And, right? in, and in the same way that the, the meat, the fish, the poultry that consumes the grass, the seeds, the whatever's sprayed on goes right into their body and into their, their meat. Right, right. So you cannot take, in, take the, these things out by just washing them. That's scary. Yeah, of course. And then um, benefits are that there are no bugs when you spray. There are no bugs. You're killing the bugs. Better looking fruit is healthy. It's fig fat, right? Looks beautiful. Bigger crops and farming, farmers can make more profit. But what are the risks? People ingest pesticide with the fruit and get sick, right? And it is a slow poisoning. It is not something something which is very acute and you know it very quickly uh, mostly takes a while until you start feeling fatigue and a lot of other symptoms. So then the most important which I feel is the endocrine disruptors, hormones and neurotransmitter keeps harmony with each other, body systems and nature and loss of these harmony can cause many disorders and uh, when you have abnormal endocrine response what you have. You can have into infectious diseases, you can have diseases you're associated with these um, endocrine anomalies like obesity and, and diabetes. You can get cancers, you can have psychiatric diseases and degenerative diseases. Uh, um, what are the endocrine disruptors? They look like sometimes these things which we are taking is they mimic like their hormones. But what, are, what is happening is if the molecule of uh, that chemical binds to the site on the cell where hormone needs to bind and have its effect, it replaces that and binds there. So there is no place for the original hormone, the real hormone, which is the natural hormone to bind there, right? So who is taking charge? It is these chemicals are changing, taking charge and disrupting the endocrine system. So this is a nice actually. Uh, Central case, alligator and endocrine disruptor at Lake, what is this, James? Apopka, Florida. Apopka. Apopka, Florida. There was a biologist, Lewis, found alligators with reproductive abnormalities in the Florida lake, but what happened was the lake had been contaminated with pesticides. So when these, um, the researcher revealed that the chemical in the lake were disrupting the animal's reproductive hormones. So these studies show that it is so important to see what chemicals are affecting these um, endocrine systems. So a lot of things uh, which are disrupting, like um, there are environmental estrogens uh, and endocrine are, uh, are endocrine disruptors. Even if you see the costumes and the lotions, many of them uh, have hormones like activity. Uh, soya products now they are genetically engineered. Um, supplements are added to feed the livestock, right? Which we were talking about. What I'm hearing from you, Dr. Chowdhury, is that we're poisoning both the earth and ourselves. Exactly. And we have to be aware of that. If we are not aware of uh, these things, everything looks fine and dandy, right? There's no problem. So the pesticides, again, I will repeat, are commonly used in the household and garden as well for the commercial and agriculture use. They are all are in actually um, affecting the environment, plastic especially.
what do we do with the plastic? Just drink the water, throw it. So it's a million and trillions and trillion. I, I do not know what I should say because I do not know that million and above that is what it is. But plastic products are in the rivers and the ocean and the water and uh, how they are affecting the human life. Unbelievable. So uh, do you have any questions? You're, you're enlightening me, Dr. Chaudhry, beyond what I've already learned. <laughs> OK. And I hope our audience. Yeah, they enjoy that. But um, I want to relate certain something why about the DDT. The DDT was uh, introduced, actually, uh, and I'll give you a small history, uh, uh, how uh, actually um, they were tickled by, by the advancement in size when the DDT was discovered. So what happened in the DDT was, they say, DDT changed the world. DDD was initially used to affect to combat malaria in some countries, typhus and other insect-borne human diseases, and that was used among military and civilian boat populations to combat malaria, typhus, and the insect-borne human diseases. And those among the soldiers, it was used in World War II. That was a time they prevented millions of people from dying from malaria. And that was a great progress because uh, malaria was one of the cause of deaths um, during that time. So that time, Dr. Paul Muller, who discovered the DDT, was effective in killing the insects, and he said that it was shortly after he, after he discovered that he won the Nobel Prize in medicine for his work. Then came uh, in the newspaper that DDT is now available for general use. So Washington the said, coming from the Washington, that the DDD camel compound with effectiveness against insect that has been compared to that of, like, they compared DDD as an atomic bomb on enemy industry. And they felt it was so great that, and they started for this people in the army and also combat, combating those diseases that um, they started using and the, gen, um, and the Surgeon General announced that it is now available in full amount authorized by regulations. So happy camper. Then what happened? Then if you see what went wrong, what went wrong was, if you see uh, this DDD was uh, in the oceans also, right? Now, fishes were fully laden with these DDD. Those eagles were eating the fish, so the eagles got uh, poisoned with the DDD. So when there were two kind of eagles now, the eagles which were not exposed to the DDD versus eagles who took the DDD. So the DDD laden eagle, uh, the, what they, they were not able to survive their eggs versus only the normal eagle was able to. So um, the species were, there was extinction of this species at that time. And if you see my uh, next slide uh, in 1950s, what was the effect of the DDT? And see, uh, we will, uh, the byproduct one eliminated the natural predator for, th and what was that for? Thatching eating caterpillars. They killed the parasitic wasp. OK, so when the wasp was killed, the caterpillar survived. So the overproduction of the caterpillar, what they did, they, these caterpillar ate the roof of the villagers' houses. So in other, um, this is one story. And the other was, the original purpose was to kill the mosquitoes, right? And then what happens, uh, that uh, DDD poison in the cats and there was outbreak of plague because when DDT accumulated in geckos, eating the geckos caused the cats. What happened? To accumulate in the cats, eventually the, the cats were killed. When the cats were killed, the rat died. The cats were eating the rats. So the population of the rats they were having, they flourished. And so did the outbreak of. So what you're saying, Dr. Chowdhury, is that sometimes the introduction of these toxins and pesticides into our environment can set off a chain of unanticipated events. Right. 
because you are disturbing the ecosystem. And the ecosystem is if there is one vector which is killed, it is an overproduction of the other. Like we were talking about the caterpillars, right? When that parasitic wasp was killed, which was eating the, the caterpillar, so the caterpillar were over, over, uh, overpopulated, and then uh, roof of their villages houses were damaged. So then um, it was uh, Rachel Carson who was a writer, and she wrote the book, which is silent, uh, spring in 1962. She spread this widespread, actually, public concern over the danger of improper pesticide use and the need for pesticide control. So from that, in 1972, it was EPA issued a cancellation order for DDT based on adverse environmental uh, effects of its use, such as those on the wildlife as well as DDT potential human risk. So today, DDT is classified as a human carcinogen by U.S. and international authorities, and this classification is based on animal studies in which some animals develop liver tumor. Now, DDT is known to be very persistent in the environment, will accumulate in the fatty tissue, and can travel long distance in the, upper, uh, in the atmosphere. And since the use of DDT uh, was discontinued in the United States, its concentration, actually, uh, its concentration, um, they say, can persist. Residue of concern from the historical use still remains, but I'm not sure about that. So um, again, we were talking about pesticide problems and pesticides because most pesticides are broad spectrum. They kill good bugs, not just pests. And that's the main issue, that um, it's not the pests they kill. They kill the good bugs, which are very effective for our living. So what, what I'm hearing from you, Dr. Chowdhury, is there was perhaps a rush to introduce this particular product into the market without anticipating what may happen. Most of the products which we use, even the med medicines which are using uh, for any diseases, and this goes on. Well, this goes on because the medicine which we are FDA approved medicine many times after after using them for many years, what happened? They figure out that they are causing this 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 thing, and then they are banned. I feel like I'm a scientific experiment. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and the same is these things. Like we know that they are very effective and they're very effective for the growth, but at the same time, how much damaging they are um, otherwise. So uh, detoxification, uh, if you are toxic, uh, if you have uh, toxin issues, um, tox those can involve many organs like liver, kidney, digestive tracts, and your uh, lymphatic system, skin and the lungs. And what is detoxification is detox getting rid of all these substances. So um, I will advise you that if you are having any kind of concern, talk to your doctor and make sure that you are not one of the candidates. So let's together build up a world in which every person has and lives in safe, adequate water, hygienic environment, and sanitation. And uh, at Seclair, we have started a group, actually, every third Wednesday of the month at 11.30. Janet McKee, which is a holistic practitioner, and myself, we are running this group to making aware of all these toxic concerns and toxic, um, including all the environmental issues. Um, you can reach us um, on the web. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, James. Yes, yes, and here's a simple prescription from Seclair. Organic fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Unplug your television and perhaps take up fishing. And you can follow Seclair on Google or Facebook and join us live Mondays around noon so you can ask your own questions for us to answer during our discussions. And stay tuned for these and other great articles and videos at www.seclair.com and on our YouTube page. Be good to yourself. Thank you.